for one final hunt. We're headed out here onto the Emerald Coast in Early Access, and I do want to be clear, even though this video is coming out after the official release of the map, it is being recorded in Early Access. We all know that Call of the Wild updates can be pretty large and can take quite some time to install, so if you're sitting there updating your game and just wanting to pass the time, hopefully this video can assist in that, and in order to get the video out, not long after the update goes live, it has to be recorded in the Early Access period. If you are watching this video not on release day and therefore not updating your game wanting to kill time, hopefully it'll be a hunt worthy of sitting back and watching. So what we're doing is actually starting at the starting outpost. If you are in fact just waiting to update your game, this will be a pretty good representation of what you can expect when you get in. We're going to head out, try to get some kangaroos, and just see what we can find out here. And that right there is exactly what we're looking for. Got a whole group, or possibly two groups, of kangaroos hopping down through here. So best I've seen is a level 7 and there's a whole bunch of those but that one's actually offering a pretty good angle and it's all but a guaranteed gold I think gold is 378 for them so 372 as a minimum gives them a pretty decent chance and that one is actually going aggressive so even better we'll let that hop in this way and we'll try to take that with the 7 mil as well now if you didn't catch it earlier today even before this video I put out a quick guide, basically going over the best hotspots, best loadout, and best times on here on the Emerald Coast. And because I recommended a particular loadout, I figure we should be using that for this video as well. So for the most part, anything class 4 or above, we'll be using the 7 mil to take them out. And only because we've done it a bunch of times, we're not going to let that guy actually come in and attack us. So a 282 for that. As a level 6, and gold is in fact 378, so we have seen with the kangaroos. Level 7s can be silvers. I wonder if level 6s ever make gold then. They probably don't. All this time here, and it's something I've really never paid any attention to for the most part, you do just have level 7s in every group. And by the way, called it an all but guaranteed gold, 373 and still 5 below the gold requirement. They're definitely tougher to get golds of, which kind of makes it fairly obvious then. They're also tougher to get diamonds of, and I really like that. It's it's a challenge for sure, and there's a lot of Troll 9s based on what I've seen both here on our map and around the community. But I think it's a good thing. It makes the diamonds that much more valuable. Now, the other main species you can expect to see down here in the southwest by the starting outpost is, of course, the feral goats. And that actually gives me the opportunity to address something that I did not address in the quick guide. And that is in regards to recommending the 243 over the 22250. The only reason is the 243 is going to be a little bit more powerful and slightly better at getting the job done, whether it is taking down a feral goat, a hog deer, a red fox, any of those sorts of things. But the 22250 is a very good gun. So if you've watched that and you're watching this and you're wondering whether or not you should spend that 7,000 on the 22250, I would definitely recommend it. It's a ton of fun. I really do like it. But the 243 is just a little more powerful. Now that said, if there is one place where the 22250 actually does have an advantage, is in the zeroing. We know the 243 and 223 when zeroed for 300 meters are really more like dead on at 250. From what I could tell, the Varminter does not actually have that particular problem. So if you really like to go for long range shots on those class 3 animals, I would actually go 22250 over 243 just because it's going to be easier to shoot at 300 meters or so. Not to say that you can't do that with the 243 either, it's not too hard to aim a little bit high and offset that, but it's nice to just not have to worry about it. So one last stop through kangaroo territory, and then we're going to start to move northwest. There's one particular area in the map that we really haven't been through, and I want to make sure we cover that while we're still here in early access. And of course, any respawns or anything like that aren't going to matter, everything resets really by the time this video actually comes out. But up through here, it's like the one spot that we just haven't been through. So I want to see what's up there. It's most likely going to be things like sandbar deer, hog deer, probably fallow deer and axis deer as well. But I still want to pass through there and see what we see. We may first, though, get one more chance that we'll kind of take this slow and try to spot everything. And there is actually a mythical up there. So see if we can get that to go alert. And it should basically stand up and give us a shot. That was pushing being too low, but it's going to work. And that'll get us two more kangaroos before we head up to that kind of unexplored area. I think it'll be good, too, just to pass through there and really have a good idea of what to expect in that spot. So if it is different than what we've seen everywhere else, 
we'll know whether or not we want to go there here in the live game, but there's another silver level 7. I think it's a good thing we shot the 8, because however many ruse we've shot now, 3 or 4, they've all been silvers. But our one gold kangaroo of the hunt is a 408 score, so not too bad, and actually still had a lot of room down there to the bottom of the lung. But we'll definitely take that. And we'll go ahead and start to make our way up into the jungle. I guess we could probably encounter more ruse as we get to there, but at least I wanted to go directly to a zone we had in case we don't find any more. And a perfect representation of the transition from outback to jungle is a sandbar deer. They're one of those species that do exist right in that transition area. I think we are calling in another one. I know I saw it was on one that took off, but there is a sandbar collar and Apparently it's meant to represent, like, a calf. I don't know that I really hear a calf in that, it sounds more like a bird to me. And I almost wonder if that's like a quail call? And maybe they've got the wrong audio? I just thought of that, because it does sound a lot like the stubble quail. Either way, it brought this guy in for now. A little 100 scoring dark brown fur type. But they do, very often, hang out right here in this kind of transition from outback to jungle. And I think that's a perfect way to start moving northwest here. And I would say, pretty much as expected, this area contains red deer, sandbar deer, fallow deer, axis deer, the same stuff as what we would tend to see around here. And good to know that we weren't missing out by not going here, but that's probably the smallest red deer we've seen this entire time here in early access. And I guess we'll take the level six. I really do like that light brown fur type now. It just looks really cool, almost I don't know, it's close to being so pale that it would be a rare, but it's a really nice color. They just look, it really helps them to stand out from the other common variants before. There were differences, but they weren't really obvious. Now they are extremely obvious. And frankly, if this wasn't a video that was intended to help pass some time, I probably wouldn't shoot a level five red deer, but we might as well go ahead and try to take him too. Worst case, it's a chance to compare the two fur types. As long as we got that shot, he was a little further away than I thought, but that dropped into a lung. But as I was saying, it's just such a nice coloration. And something that I find interesting, I can't remember if they were the same prior to the rework, but the light brown has way less kind of fur around the neck and stuff. If we go and grab our dark brown, which should be right over here, one of the very first things you notice in terms of differences is there's way more fur around the neck. I do just think too, oh, this is the brown variation, not even the dark brown. I don't know that we've had many of these. The brown and dark brown are pretty similar, but more even darker fur like on the face, neck, and shoulders on the dark brown, maybe we can go and find one. But both of them have significantly more fur around the necks. And I just think they look a lot more kind of majestic. I, I think dark brown's my favorite, but the light browns do kind of like the light gray Rocky Mountain Elk really stand out. The light brown red deer really stand out. That, I think, is what we're looking for. And actually, even broke the record that we just set in terms of our smallest red deer. That's a level four, but we can go ahead and take him with the seven mil as well. And there's another lake right next to this. While we're on our kind of red deer detour, we might as well check it. It's literally 10 o'clock, so red deer are done drinking anyway. But it's a good thing we had what we needed at the smaller lake. Cause I guess no red deer drink there, that or maybe some that were close for spooked, but even at that I kind of think we would have seen them. That's a decent axis deer. I wonder if we can get a shot at that. He's going to go down over the hill not broadside, so maybe we'll kind of extend our detour, but you can see already just from here, much more darker fur. And again, that kind of, I think more so than the light brown, but less than the brown variant, more fur around the neck. I'm almost certain the brown actually has the most. That's interesting though. I kind of like that there's that much variation, even almost in the models, between one fur type and the next. Either way, we have a pretty solid looking axis here to hopefully go and find. That's gonna be him standing right there nervous. And if we can just kind of scoot down around without hopefully alerting him, we should be able to get that shot in there with the 243. So he's lifting his head. That should hit probably straight through the lungs. I was hoping to get a hard shot at that, but even that will bring him down. And he was up to 221, so I guess a chance of being a level four diamond, I know that used to be a thing. 
and their true racks haven't changed, so maybe it still is, but I haven't seen it in a really long time. I guess one thing that could have changed would have been the actual requirement for diamond, but I'm not even so sure that is the level 4 diamond rack. He has a 199, so there should be one rack even bigger than this yet. Got some, like, stickers by the brow tines, though. And it's amazing, even though the antlers are the same. Just giving them the new models, it makes everything look that much better. And by the way, the requirement is still 217, so it should still be possible to get a level 4 diamond. They just look so great, though. And it's every time we see even some of these older species that we've already got in the lodge, it makes me think of how much there is to potentially upgrade in our lodge now between Euro Bison and Plains Bison getting True Racks. Probably will still try to get at least one True Racks Diamond Springbuck, even though, in my opinion, they should be a good bit bigger than they are. And then, obviously, all the new species and still grinding for a Fallow Deer Great one. And speaking of that, it is Fallow Drink time now, so maybe we can find one up there. We even have a drink zone there already. And go figure. Our best red deer is actually in a rest zone. I can't tell if he's the brown fur type or dark brown, but this was the lake that we had the fallow zone. And I actually haven't heard any fallow like fleeing or anything, but got a couple over there. There's the white variant too. How do these ranges stack up? Where was our seven? There's even axis deer up there. There's all kinds of stuff with this lake. I completely lost track of the red deer though. But that actually ought to work. If we go ahead and take that decent sized white fur type fallow, we should be able to get away with the red deer not hearing it. That is what we want to see from our fallow. And actually, if that was really over 250, the red deer wouldn't have even heard it. They definitely heard it, but they're not going to take off. So if we could get him to kind of turn back our way or even just go broadside for a second again, hopefully we can get that shot. I think he's going to lay right back down. So going to have to use the 22. Go ahead and try to get him to stand up. I think, yeah, he's the brown fur type, but I've got to kind of reevaluate things anyway and decide if the brown fur type maybe even looks the most majestic. There was a real chance of catching that hide in the top of the head, but did we even get a lung? I don't think we did because we had to avoid the hind. He's starting to drop though. I just don't know what we could have hit. It was enough to bring him down, therefore, I think I know exactly what we hit. Probably got him right in the vertebrae, especially since we were aiming high to avoid hitting the hide. That would probably make sense, and most likely that's his track right there, but a pretty solid white fur type fallow, 191 score. I think that makes him our second best that we've got with this particular fur type. That is, outside of hopefully getting a fallow deer great one, that is the one thing I'm kind of looking forward to the most with the fallow deer grind. I really hope we can manage to get a diamond with the white fur type to spawn, because I just think that would look amazing. And really, even though we have a 270 diamond in our multi-mount, which looks really quite good, if we could get any score diamond with that fur type, I think it would have to go in the full body multi-mount. And fittingly enough, we've got a stubble quail down here. Hopefully, it'll actually flush and give us a decent shot. The best thing I find is to try to just spot them and then get a shot before the spotting outline goes away. That got it. And uh, you've seen the thumbnail, you already know where this is going. So let's go and claim that. I still don't know where her red deer's at. But while we go and try to find it, let's take a look at a clip that I frankly never thought would happen. And it was just because I was trying to get one last bit of B-roll for the quick guide video. There's no way this is happening right now. I'm literally recording like the last clip that I need for my quick guide. And I just picked up this track. An albino stubble quail. <laughs> like, you're actually kidding me. And I actually, in this quick guide, I'll be talking about what I consider the best loadout, the best hotspots, the whole thing. And I mentioned in it that I used the drilling combo gun a good bit. And I wanted to just shoot a sandbar deer with it. And because of wanting to use it just to show it, that's going to be the weapon that we have for this quail. So, we're going to try to find it. It's very old tracks, and quail are not easy to track. Plus, we don't have a zone. But this could be insane, and we don't get to keep it. That's the worst part. That's a quail really close. Just going to get the shotgun ready in case. Oh, I think that was her. That looked really white. 
and it stayed blue. That's gotta be it. I can barely even see it. Look at that. I don't care about any other quail going over. Oh my goodness. That's literally impossible. <laughs> There's no way this is like the last thing we do in early access. Unbelievable. And it flushed just perfectly. Like could not have asked for that to go any better. Minus the fact that it's in early access and not in the live game. An albino stubble quail. 22 meters away. Literally right over top of us. Just a bronze, a two and a half kilometer track distance. I don't know if these are going to be like Bob White Quail, but if they are, pretty high chance we never see this again. I mean, just insane. Literally insane. The cool thing is, I guess, as I said with the big piebald sandbar that we shot and then our leucistic sandbar that we shot, at least these things will remain in our early access lodge. I mean, that is just the coolest thing, but the most unfortunate thing as we're literally leaving early access. I mean, I'm adding this to the video that's basically something to watch while you update your game. So it's effectively the last thing. I, I genuinely can't believe it, and I can't even be upset, because that is, as far as I, as I know, based on what Jaxie said on the EW stream, unbelievably rare. And we got it based on a track while, like, I wanted to shoot a sandbar with the 9.3 just as kind of B-roll while I was talking about it. Just nuts. Literally insane. I, I can't believe that. So that was truly insane. I honestly can't believe that even happened. And, of course, we get to enjoy it for all of, like, less than 12 hours. And then the game's gonna update, the live game will be here, and... We won't be able to see our albino stubble quail in the trophy lodge. It was just insane that we even ran into one. And it was just, I clicked on one disturbed edge. Just happened to be there or I'd have never even known that there was an albino quail on the map. And who knows if we'll ever see one again. I would say it's not overly likely. But maybe they aren't as rare as the albino bobwhite quail. Now, on EW's live stream, I believe Jaxie said something to the effect of this is probably the only time a lot of you will see this when he spawned an albino stubble quail to actually show it on their stream. So I'm guessing maybe they are actually similar to the Bob Whites and we may have just gotten insanely lucky with an initial spawn, but either way, it was really cool to actually get one. I wish it had been in the live game, but I wasn't even sure if I was gonna have time to make this particular video. And then that happened and we just had to do one more video. It had to be the subject of its own video and I mean just one of the most insane kills we've ever had in early access and we've had some good ones over the years but unfortunately this video is probably not going to be as long as I would have ideally wanted it to be with the entire point being trying to pass some time if I had it my way we would have like a 30 or 35 minute hunt just really trying to pass as much time as possible to get you through what can be a pretty long update and as I mentioned before, I wasn't even sure if I was going to get to do this video, but here we are and I still wanted to make it as long as possible, only because the entire point is to kill time. But I think we're going to try to get maybe one or two more kills here. I want to get a Rusa Deer if we can. This has become one of my favorite Rusa Deer areas, and it's just tough when, for whatever reason, we're only getting does. But a decent hog deer along the way is always welcome. 85.58 for him, so at least we got a gold, and we'll see if we can find a Rusa Deer hiding somewhere up in here. We got both of our level 5 trolls somewhere in this general vicinity. I gotta think there's some good ones hiding up here. There is a halfway decent sandbar, which we will also take, but still not the Rusa male that we're looking for. I'm determined to find just one, and maybe that's the thing that we need to extend this video and help to pass a little bit more time. If it ends up working out that somehow the length of this video matches with the length of your update, that would be ideal, but if you're already sitting here playing the game and starting to head out onto this incredible new map, one thing I wanted to recommend, and I wanted to do it earlier in the video and I forgot, be prepared to get trolled by max levels. Hope for the best, always execute as if it's going to be a diamond, but. Prepare yourself to get trolled some, and 
I think it's going to be a little bit more enjoyable. It can be frustrating to get trolled by max levels a lot. I mean, here in Early Access, in less than a week of play, we've had no less than eight trolls here on the Emerald Coast. The way that I look at it, if they do troll, I just treat them as a non-max level. So for instance, we get legendary kangaroos to troll. I'll just mentally pretend they're a mythical and move on. Eventually, one of those nides is going to make it and it'll be all the more rewarding. And of course, the ruse that we call in is literally the smallest one we've seen this entire time. If you didn't know, the sandbar caller we looked at earlier, and actually there may have been one more male and I feel compelled to go and look for it. It actually does call in Rusa Deer, Sandbar, I think even Hog Deer, and maybe one other. If we go ahead and mouse over that, it is Sandbar, Rusa, and Hog Deer. So it's useful for all of them. I still think the audio is wrong. That'll be interesting to, to pay attention to, but a 59 scoring bronze. That is a Hall of Shamer if I've ever seen it. If only we would get to keep it, we would definitely put it in there. But let's see. Can we find a track from another male Rusa? And can we get one that's maybe got like a little bit of antler? I mean, that is a little more like it. Even as a level four, that guy's not much more impressive, but if he's just gonna stand there, back the neck or possibly even brain shot will work. And at least he's got a little bit of main beams, unlike the level three that we shot that basically didn't even have any, but that was a decent way to kind of extend our state. Both of those Ruzo were like the exact same size. That said, after shooting the albino quail, I haven't even taken it back to the trophy lodge to take a look. So I'm really excited to go and do that. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the first and last time we actually get to see it in the lodge, at least until the next early access, whenever that may be. But our final Rusa is a 102 scoring silver, a little better than 47 or whatever we had. And let's go and finally put our albino quail in the trophy lodge. If there was ever one trophy to bring from early access to the live game, I wish it could be this one. It's amazing how little they are too, like, that's the smallest platform in the game, and it doesn't even take up like a quarter of it. We'll see if a pose makes it look any bigger anywhere, I mean at least that's not too bad. I don't know if we're repeating anything or not, we may have been, but that is probably what we'd leave it as. And what's crazy is you barely see it, like it blends in with the wall. Maybe we'll find a better place for it, just so that when we come back in a future early access, it'll actually be visible somewhere, but what an insane kill. For the circumstances to be what they were, even to find it to begin with was so unlikely. And we've got an albino stubble quail in our trophy lodge. Just insane, but hopefully this video has helped to pass a little bit of time. Maybe some of you guys are already done with the update, and if not, hopefully it won't be too much longer, but that was fun. I'm really glad we got to do it, especially because of the albino quail. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get the stream of this map officially and start to keep kills here very soon. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.